actually broke all records last Monday, be that as it may. Uh, Liz Warren is saying, the presidential candidate, that we could have big problems coming again. Uh, the woman who accurately predicted the last financial crisis is saying we could be headed toward another one, maybe because of a lot of debt for households, corporations. She left out the federal government. Be that as it may, could such a catastrophe happen again? Economist Lindsay Piazza, Republican strategist Amy Tarkadian, Democratic strategist Stephen Cobb. So, Lindsay, she is saying it's a ticking time bomb and it's ticking. Well, I think she's talking about the economy falling off a cliff at this point, on the verge of recession. I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I certainly do see warning signs that the economy is losing momentum. We see this in, in slower levels of manufacturing activity, waning business investments, slower activity in the housing market, consumer activity very uneven, muted inflation pressures. So there's ample evidence that the economy is slowing. I just don't know if I agree with her sentiment that we're teetering on the brink of recession, as she says, in the near term, meaning in the coming weeks or months. But of course, a lot of the proposals that these Democratic presidential hopefuls are talking about would simply exacerbate the slowdown, as I've already highlighted. We talk about raising the cost of labor, raising manufacturing costs, and a gross increase in government <coughs> outlays or expenditures it would only compound that weakness that we're already seeing bubbling underneath the surface. You know, Amy, I don't see it in the numbers and the data. So couldn't it just be a candidate frightening people? Oh, absolutely. That's what she's doing. And she's trying to bring the attention to herself. And it's actually a pretty smart tactic. Um, so she's trying to be the, uh, the policy candidate, the one that's going to bring forth new and fresh ideas that will energize her base, um, which are actually pretty dangerous. You know, great ideas. I mean, I'm a mother of four, so paying for child care sounds phenomenal. Um, canceling all, all student loans um, and their debt sounds fantastic, um, but they're unrealistic, and it will just spiral our country into, into a further catastrophe financially. Um, but that's definitely what she is doing. You know, if she's so, so excellent at um, coming up or being able to see what's in the future economically. Maybe instead of calling her Pocahontas, we should name her Nostradamus. <laughs> well, she was Nostradamus a decade ago, whether people want to accept that or not. But I will ask you this, Stephen Cobb. Does she stand out with her solutions? Because at face value, whether you're Republican or Democrat, a $15 minimum wage, a free public college, Medicare for all, that kind of thing, that, that doesn't seem like a prescription that will improve a debt issue. It will compound it, wouldn't it? Well, one of the important things to look at here is that she's not the only one trying to prognosticate and see where the economy is going. You can look back over the last year at various different financial publications, and they're talking about the yield curve, they're talking about consumer confidence, and the question is wondering, as we go up well, almost 10 years of economic growth, how long can we sustain that, or will that be that slowdown? Well, there's a very clearly, big difference, not to be fair, but be there's a, a very big difference, just to be clear. And I don't care whether you're on the right or left to say the economy corrects and, and, or, or the financial markets collapse. That, that's a little scary, don't you think? I mean, whether it's, it's a matter of degree, right? When you're talking about the difference between slowdown and, or, or, or catastrophe, there, there's a lot of room within there. And so the question is, particularly for some of these 2020 candidates, is trying to look you know, down the road 15 months and figure out where the economy is going to be. And if there is a slowdown or worse, how do we best prepare for that and what policies should we put in place no, no, fair to enough. make That's sure that those that are going to be most directly affected by that right. are that we're, we're not just using platitudes, that we're, there, there's substance behind it. Okay. That's the important part there. And then, Lindsay, one of the things that happens, this has been a long, uh, you know, uh, recovery, the longest in, in American history, certainly, and obviously its days would, would be, look to be numbered just based on that. Do you think the president takes a great risk constantly quoting the stock market as that barometer, though, that you watch? Because it can be a friend and it could be a fiend. Well, it, there certainly is a lot of volatility, so there is downside risk. If it continues to point to the equity market as the barometer for the economy on a down day, that leaves him with very little to point to. But I think the average American does, in fact, look to the stock market to, it, to gauge whether or not the economy is on track. What's interesting, though, you mentioned that this economy or this recovery has been on stage now for more than 10 years, the longest that we've seen in history. It's also the weakest that we've True. seen, at least in post-World War II history, talking about an average growth rate of 2.3 
3%. Typically, when we come out of recession, we're talking about a sustained growth rate of 3, 4, 5 percent. Then again, this that wasn't around, any, that wasn't any recession. Was it? All right. Uh, Lindsay, final word. Amy, yeah, Neil, I'd like to jump. I, I wish you had more time. Yeah, I'd like to jump in real quick if I could. Finish it. Which point. is that I, you know, I think that the, one of the issues is that I think uh, you know, the normal American voter doesn't necessarily look to the stock market. I think they look to their bank account and see if, you know, if tragedy strikes, right. are they in a are position they where they can it? weather it? Are they ready for it? Guys, thank you all very much. Sorry to be it? rude. You choked me up. That's thank a little bit. All right. We may